Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we'll show you tools, tricks, and tips when you visit your folks. Today you'll know how to fix your folks' computer. Yay! Welcome to Know How, the show where we show you how to do stuff. I, as actor, Leo Laporte, and this is a really good one for the holiday season. Yeah, I mean, I know when I visit my folks, I go to their computers, I'm like, what did you do? I know. And there are lots of ticks, uh, ticks, trips that trips I'll take to my parents' house, and then I will yes. use tips. <laughs> that I will explain here, because there are a lot of tricks I use to make sure my mom's computer works really well. So, you, if I, you guys get insulted, by the way, this is really for my mom. Just uh, my mom. Just mom. But I actually, I, I use this all the time. I visit people, not just older people, but all kinds of people who are not computer experts. We're supposedly computer experts. So we're expected to come over there and solve their problems. Sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's just, well, what was your password? Uh, and entering it in. But sometimes it's a lot more complicated. Do you bring, I used to do this, a notebook full of CDs, full of software, you know, antiviruses, anti-spyware, Windows boot disks, all of that stuff. What I use these days is this nice little 16 gigabyte drive. That okay? is so, so nice. I used to bring the books and CDs. I used to, I used to have that cataloged, and maybe if I was lucky, I'd have a hard drive to bring along. But now these have gotten so small and so cheap, especially at the holiday season. There's a whole bunch of anti malware you could bring with you, and a lot of them just run right off the key. How big do you recommend? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to like entertain yourself, 16 gigabytes is fine. Right. But if you're talking about just doing lots of little like little programs, I'd say two gigabytes is probably even that enough. small. Yeah, because that's, that's kind of USB key you find in a cereal box these that days. That's nothing. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a couple of tools I want to point the the uh, folks to. It's Hijack. This is one of my Very favorites. Very handy. Yeah. Now, so if you get run into a computer and you've and you're like, what on earth is going on here? Hijack. This is free. And what it does is it gives you a giant log of what's going on in that machine. This takes some skill to use because you have to be able to read that log and know what it's saying. Right. It also is very impressive when you show your folks, look at all this, and they go, wow. And you know what that means? You go, yes, I do. Now, if you heard that window sound, it's because I hooked up that USB key to this laptop. And you can see Hijack This is available right there. I can double click it, and it's going to give me an option to scan. And I'll say, okay, for some reason it denied access, whatever, hit okay. And you'll see a nice log. You're probably log. trying to scan the USB key. Yeah. Huh? So yeah. you see a nice log. So this is the kind of data that you'll look around the web to see, okay, what exactly can I do with this? Uh, I used Hijack This a bunch of times back when there was that whole Sony rootkit scenario. Mm -hmm. Hijack This was one of the few things that I could find it. You'll see BHOs in there. That stands for Browser Helper Object. That used to be a really common way to hijack a machine. Is you'd install a BHO, it would send the browser every time to a poker site or a sex site. Oh. If your if your parents are saying every time I open Internet Explorer, it goes to the poker site, then you're looking for BHOs. Now a while ago, we also showed you guys about portable applications. There are portable antivirus and spy bots, uh, search and destroy available. We'll have links on our show notes. You're old school, man. You're I bringing like, out the old stuff. I like stuff. bringing out search and destroy. SpyBot portable runs. It's going to say, do I want to run it? Say, sure. There's ClamWin, which is a great antivirus that's free. Yeah, so this Open runs, source. These are all open source uh, apps, which is kind of nice. And the thing about these is they, they, they can run off the drive themselves, at least ClamWin They're and portable. SpyBot. Yeah. Hijack this can run off of the disk, right. uh, but you probably want to just install it right there. You know, one of the things I really like is a boot CD. And ideally, your parents would have made the recovery CD with their computer, but almost certainly they did not. So it's a great idea to arrive with a Windows installer, a boot CD. There are a number of very good ones. Hiren's boot CD is excellent. There's an emergency boot CD. These will have to go on a bootable device, whether it's a USB, a USB key or a CD-ROM, but those are really handy to have. Well, that, I mean, we showed you how to make USB keys of Linux, so if you wanted to bring a live distro 
give it a go or install that's it right a from great there, idea you can do that as well you know where that's handy is if you're trying to figure out is it a software problem a driver problem or is it a hardware problem if you can boot to a live CD of Linux and everything seems to work fine then you know it's their install that's causing the problem not the hardware on the other hand you boot to the live CD of Linux and there's still a problem then you know it's the hardware that's giving them fits I asked the audience what exactly what tool do they use when they go to fix their parents computers and if you follow me on Twitter this is how you find out now Eric Christensen did me a favor he retweeted tweeted my tweet, I asked, how do you fix your parents' computers? If you answer with the hashtag TwitKH, we might share your answer on the show. And this is how I can actually organize things and find these. Our first, our first fellow was Eric Schneck. He said he's a big fan of TeamViewer. He installs it on everyone's PCs so he can remotely access everything without having to be there. There are a number of ways to do this. We've mentioned LogMeIn in the past. Of course, our sponsor, GoToMyPC. And GoToAssist is great for that. But GoToMyPC and GoToAssist are paid tools. TeamViewer is free. LogMeIn has a free version. In most cases, the free version will give you the basics you need to get in there and fix the problem. Especially when it's your family. It's only a, a small... With mom, I use GoToAssist. She needs it. Believe me, she needs it. Jeremy Lusk wrote in. He said, wipe, reinstall, back up, wipe, and reinstall. <laughs> because when all you have is a hammer. <laughs> this is true. This is a good option. It's actually, in many cases, the only solution. If there's a big infestation on there, sounds like you like to try to fix the infestation. In my case, I almost always will back up and reinstall. And that's simply because you can't always get rid of everything. That's definitely true. You've only got a day or two to fix this problem. This one cracked me up. Merrill Y. Jim, or Merrily Jim, sorry if I'm, I'm hacking this together. He goes, install Linux Mint and don't give them root password. Worked for three plus years and counting. Yeah. So he stops them from installing things. That's a whole different approach. It does fix the problem. Now sometimes when you need to wipe the disk, as I mentioned, and the tool for that, which is free and, and open source, is Derek's Boot and Nuke. If you Google DBAN, you'll find it very quickly. You will want to put that on a separate USB key or device. You can't run it from the internal hard drive. You got to run it from a separate device. But then that wipes everything, all the sectors, everything, and that's when you can really start fresh. That's, in, in my opinion, if there's malware on there, you mentioned root kits, you can't always be sure you got everything. Mm -hmm. The safest thing to do is Derek's boot, kit, boot and nuke, wipe that drive, and reinstall Windows. Just hope that your parents made those recovery disks. So on my machine here, we've messed it around a little bit. You can see I have toolbars. Now, oh, this, is, this isn't even those. so bad. There's only two of them on this one. I know I've come home and I've seen three to five oh, of these. Ask. Jeeves, whatever that is, uh, the uh, Alexa, the Yahoo, the I mean, it goes on and on, and it takes up more of the page than the page itself. My dad's computer had tons of this halfway down, you'd oh. see it. There, there's a pretty easy way to take care of this. Uh, you go into Tools, you go into Manage Add-ons, and what you can do is see the Google Toolbar there. You can select it, then hit Disable. Now, while you're doing this at all, you, you're going to see Select Any other add-ons you want to disable, you can say sure, say disable. And what that lets you do is this, this should disappear once I hit uh, close. Probably have to restart IE. And if it's reputable like Yahoo or Google or Ask, disabling it's plenty. You don't have to uninstall yeah, it. But On the other hand, if it's a little scary, you might, you know, Hacker Toolbar 3.4, <laughs> you might want to wipe that one off. If you want to get rid of it entirely, you go into Control Panel. And I'm old school, so I always have to go out of the category view because I don't know where it is. I got to go to Programs, wherever that is. Tell your folks, because one thing people are more aware of nowadays than ever is privacy. Tell your folks that when you install a toolbar on your browser, it can watch everywhere you go. That's the real purpose for installing toolbars like Alexa and perhaps Yahoo toolbar, uh, Google toolbar, is to follow you everywhere you go. They don't want that, and so they'll gladly sacrifice their toolbars. So from this giant list, we got uninstall. Google toolbar. Look at that. We're that uninstall. Makes it easy. And obviously, since this is a Google toolbar, it should be pretty easy to uninstall. Some things take a little longer to get rid of, especially if they're a little less reputable. As you were mentioning, Leo, they Sometimes disappear. Sometimes they don't have an uninstall feature at all. That's what was the monkey one? Uh, Bonzi Buddy? Bonzi Buddy. Remember yeah, that? he used to walk around with a toolbar. I that was that a guy. nightmare. God, you couldn't get rid of that to save your life. That's when maybe wiping the disk is a, a good idea. You ever use malware bites? Ah, you know, I've I've tried it out. I know, I think, I believe it's the free version of a paid service. Yeah, M A L W A. It's a little weird spelling. W A R E B Y T E S. It's all the computer spellings of those words, and it's at malwarebytes.org. It's another great malware removal tool. But again, I I really want to underscore this. You can get a little over cocky and say, oh, I got see malwarebytes says there's nothing there. I got rid of everything. And there still is something lurking in there. That's why almost always I like to wipe it if I uh, if I can. There's the the free and the pre paid version of them. Um, Something in the chat room has noticed. I actually probably have it on my USB key. I think it's there. I was testing out a whole bunch of different. Oh, you services. gotta have it. 
I think it's MBAM set up right there. You know, many parents already have a tool. Microsoft ships with Windows and updates it every single month if your parents are doing the second Tuesday patches. Uh, something called the Malicious Software Removal Tool, and you can run that just from the command line. Just do Windows R to get the run window and type MRT return. That'll open it. There's no icon. There's no start uh, menu item. So you have to do that. It's Windows R MRT. Once you're running that, you can get it to do a thorough scan. Just MRT. You got Just it. Just this MRT? MRT right there. Windows R opens that open box. Hit M MRT. Ah, maybe you don't have you it on there. MRT. What version of Windows are you Just running? Just Windows my 7 Ultimate. Hmm. I probably turned off all that stuff because it's my machine and I kind of pretend like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's the uh, that Microsoft updates that it's not an antivirus, it's not even malware bytes. It's a very simple malicious software removal tool that Microsoft uses, but they don't do a thorough scan on this patch Tuesdays. They do a quick scan. So a thorough scan is a good idea. Uh, that's the first thing I do when I sit down at my parents' Windows machine. Well, the other big thing I always suggest is go to MS Config. Always go to MS Config because you what's never running. know what's going yeah. on. The quickest way to do that is just go to your run menu, MS Config. I'm sure you guys know this already, but always check this out to see what services are running, first of all. There's tons of services running right now on my machine. I've I got a great thing that you could put on your USB key. If you, Microsoft has a site called Sysinternals, and Mark Rasinovich, who is, of course, uh, the king of this stuff, has a whole bunch of tools there, including something called Auto Runs, that is uh, MS Config on steroids. It tells you everything that's auto running, gives you complete information about it. Uh, M of course, they've already got MS Config. That comes with Windows. But if you've got that USB key, get that Rasinovich uh, sysinternal software on there that would be very, very handy to have. There's a whole bunch of different programs there, uh, most of which will be useful in one way or the other. The one I recommend, though, is called Auto Runs. Yeah, well, this is uh, this is my machine, so there's not a ton of things in the startup. I try to add some iTunes things. It's clean. Trying to, try it's to clean, make it worse man. than it is. But, I mean, it's it's my machine, so I've cleaned out most of this stuff already. So, you know, iTunes, I know in older machines, XP machines in particular, kind of slows it down. QuickTime helpers, iTunes helpers. Look for all these things in startup in MS Config because they won't show up in the start. Remember the startup folder? Yeah. That's where most of these things used to be. Oh, no, they're all sorts of places. Now Mostly handy. now they're in the registry. And speaking of registries, what's your stand on registry cleaners? This is a trick question. My stance on registry cleaners, does that exist anymore? <laughs> yes, it does. And there's one that everybody uses called C Cleaner, CC Cleaner. You know, my opinion on registry cleaners is they can do much more harm than good, but every once in a while there's something in the registry you really don't want to have there. Piriform's C Cleaner is a good, safe, cleaner. The problem is, and it's free by the way, the problem is uh, it's not aggressive enough. If you really want to do a good job cleaning, you're going to be aggressive. The problem is if you get aggressive, you can hose the computer. Mm -hmm. You can make it unbootable. So there's this kind of balance between how much you want to clean up and how much <laughs> you want to fix later. Uh, I'm not a big fan of registry cleaners. Uh, they very rarely uh, add any value, but this is a good one if you need to have one. Anytime my registry in the old days used to be too messed up, I ended up doing a clean install. Because yeah. that, I didn't think if you agree with it, you. it really did much. I agree with but you. then again, you should... See, is good. This is more for your USB key. Just one more tool you can have, just as something to do. It's pretty conservative. By the way, before you remove all these toolbars and those other things, you know, ask your folks what they're using, because if they really do use and they, they depend on something, don't remove that one. But, you, I mean, there's so much convincing you could do. Uh, there's my favorite tweak. This is, a, this is a trick. This is an absolute trick. I've been using this for years now. And I talked about it on, on like, the post-show of TNT, and people were like, you should explain this on the show. I want to know. Okay, what is it? here's the trick. Okay, we're going to turn Chrome into IE. That's what we're going to do. Can't be done. It can be done. So, <laughs> so first what we're going to do is we're going to install Chrome like we always do. See, and mom and dad really want to use IE. Well, here's the thing. But like, it's not safe. For my mom, like, she knows to click the E when there's right. internet. That's right. the internet to my mom. She'll click the E, and it's not because she won't bother to learn something. It's because of what she's used to. And you can't uninstall Internet Explorer, so it's going to be there. So this gives you a way to run Internet Explorer inside a Chrome. Nope, not even no? that. No, okay. I'm just going to hide it. That's what I'm going to do, okay? Because there, there is a Chrome extension that lets you yeah. run Internet Explorer within Chrome. That's a little bit safer because it's sandboxed. You're not even going to do that. Mm -mm. You're going to hide it. I'm going to hide gonna, it. You're going to make your mom crazy. So, yeah, if you look at my desktop right now, you'll see what looks to be Internet Explorer Wait a minute, right that here. is Internet Explorer. I'll look at that. It. And then, wait, that's not Internet Explorer. Oh, she doesn't but, know, though. So what see. I'm going to do, I'll show you how I did this really simple. You, you changed the icon, you devil well, dog. Well, first I made a shortcut to Chrome, right? We're going to yeah. do that, and then that's where we're going to go into Properties, and we're going to go and change the icon. Oh, you are sneaky. I like to be sneaky and where it's located where the IE 
where the IE uh, icon is located is in C uh, colon slash Windows System 32, Shell 32 DLL. So we're just going to... Go ahead, Mom. Click the IE Good icon. Luck. It's I okay. It, sometimes it's better, we'll let to, you. it's better to trick than to teach. I do think that that's a good idea, though, is to install Chrome on your folks' computer and encourage them to use it. I, I think Chrome is a little safer. It sandboxes everything. One of the best features of Chrome is it has its own Flash. In fact, what I would recommend doing is installing Chrome, uninstalling Flash, mm -hmm. because Flash is a notorious carrier of problems, and your parents are certainly not keeping Flash up to date. So by doing that, you can eliminate uh, at least one hazard by uninstalling Flash and using Chrome's Flash, which is in Sandbox. What about something like Sandboxy? Do you like Sandboxy or other I sandboxing tried that. tools? Well, how's it, how's it's it nice. Been? It basically makes every process run in a sandbox. A sandbox is kind of an insulated. Uh, sandbox where a program can run, it can do stuff, but it can't do stuff to the file system. So it keeps malware from infecting system files uh, and really burrow burrowing deep within your system. I think it's a really uh, good choice. Sandbox IE, it was called originally because it was for Internet Explorer. Now it runs uh, for a variety of applications uh, on Windows. I'm going to have a heck of a time finding this. The, uh... Now, some of us have parents who, despite our best efforts, no matter what they do, they will trash a system over and over again. For them, it might be time to get Pharonix Deep Freeze. This is a great application. It's used at hotels and anywhere there's a public computer, libraries, and the way it works, you set up a system just so, perfectly, no malware, clean, reliable, and then you can set it up that every time they reboot, it starts fresh. So no matter what they've done in their last session, they're back to their clean image each and every time. Microsoft used to make a program called Steady State that did the same thing. It was free. They don't make it anymore. But Pharonix Deep Freeze is an amazing application. It took me a while to find shell shell32.dll. Look at three, there's your icons. Three, 32, uh, just three quarters into the way to your right, you find the Internet Explorer <laughs> icon. You hit OK. You change the name. We're going to hit OK. We're going to change that to E, then we're going to switch this name. We're Rename it, yeah. yeah. Don't calls. want mom to think she's running Chrome. Let's we'll call it Internet right now because we have two Internet Explorers. And then you're just going to pin that to the Start menu, and then she'll never know it's there. But don't forget to do something simple. You should really make this the default browser if this is the one you want. Yeah. Chrome, Settings, make Google Chrome. I'm a fan of Chrome. It runs faster. I believe it's more secure, and I love the fact that it isolates Flash. She doesn't need Flash. That brings up a good point. You probably do want to go through things like Flash, uh, Adobe Reader, any programs they've installed. They're not updating those, I can guarantee you. They're probably not even running Windows Update, but of course you're running Windows Update to clean them up, but also update all their third-party apps. A number of them can really be the bearer of bad tidings for this holiday season. And I liked it. Old Geek recommended System Restore. This is built into all versions of Windows since XP. What do you think of System Restore? I have had such mixed results with my usage of System Restore that I don't find it reliable at all. Yeah. So I don't know if, I mean, that might work for some. If something's been mucked up enough, maybe it'll work. And it's built in, so you can. it's worth a shot. The problem is that the malware authors know about System Restore. And almost always, if you get malware, they'll screw up your System Restore. They don't want you to go back in time. Or worse, they're sneaky. They, they inject themselves into the System Restore file, and then you're just restoring the malware. The other thing is, I, from my memory, it takes a long time for that restore to happen, and then you find out nothing has changed. Right. So then you've wasted a lot of time, and that machine is unusable, and it's still no good. That's why I like to try to diagnose differently. Good point. Yeah, Web9762 in the chat room says, make sure after you do that Chrome rename that you run IE one last time, go into the Internet options, and make sure it doesn't ask to be the default browser, just in case by accident Smart mom and dad idea. run Great it. Smart idea. Great idea. Don't let them, don't let them change it back to the default browser. And like we've mentioned before, the last thing I do before I leave, I install Hamachi, which is that product from LogMeIn. It's that free, pretty much one-click solution to VPN. We've shown it in previous shows. It's free for up to five licenses. I install that there. I actually use rename the icon and say, press me, mom. And then the second one is v, uh, Real VNC. I like Real VNC just because I've been using it a lot. And this time. is so you can get into their system remotely and fix problems. Right. I like using that. People use TeamViewer for that option. We mentioned that. I've yeah. been using VNC and Hamachi for years. When I was living, living in Vermont, I would simply just go, Mom, just click these three buttons, click the <laughs> Hamachi and this, and then I would take care of it from Vermont because. I could not drive to New York every single time <laughs> something went wrong. And sometimes it's kind of hard to explain things over the phone. It's a lot easier to do it by remote.
Some folks were like, I tell my folks to use their iPhone and FaceTime and just point. I'm like, that's an idea. <laughs> that's I, an interesting. I, I, I like what a, I want to see what you're seeing. Would you show me? Because sometimes it's hard to like, okay, click the options menu. It's like, what is the options menu? Well, worse than that, they'll often misreport or misdiagnose what's going on. They'll say, I can't see the internet. What does that mean? I can't see the internet. And it might just be that the IE icon disappeared, and it might be they can't get online. You don't know. So it is always a better idea to be able to get Sometimes, it. Sometimes, yeah. The good news about VNC is it always will be free. It's open source. Uh, Hamachi is currently free, but I've heard word that LogMeIn plans to start charging for that. They do charge after five after five licenses, and they do charge for professional tools. But the weird right. thing is they bought it a, a couple of years ago, and they still haven't, they haven't made this tiny bit one. Yeah. Uh, it's still free, so I, I still use it's it because it's a great program. It's pretty safe, and yeah. it's really easy. Although Team Viewer does something very similar, from what I've heard, I don't have full experience with that one. So, guys, if you want links to everything we talked about, show notes, or maybe you want to watch us in HD, you want to download this, and or you want to just watch the episodes while you know gather around the family during that holiday trip, you're like, I want to watch all 24 episodes. <laughs> you can twitchtv kh Every episode, show notes, links to everything we talked about. There we are last week where Leo told me to take a seat, and I did. <laughs> that's, a go that's actually what's happening. What did we talk about last week? How to start a podcast. So if you wanted to know how to do that, you could do that. Twit.tv slash KH for show notes uh, and all kinds of things. You're going to need the show notes this week because we just gave you a brain dump of everything you and I have learned over the years on fixing our our parents' computers. And I always set up that remote thing, I tell you. Very important. There's always something that's going to pop up eventually. Yep. And although I'm really curious about one of those suggestions of just installing Linux and just saying. You know what I did? No. Gave my mom an iPad and I said, use this, mom. And she's very happy. That's an option. Yep. Uh, I believe some of the jokes were, you know, if you want to diagnose a Mac, you just throw it out and give a new Mac. <laughs> that was one of them. Lots of different options for these kinds of machines buy a Mac. I don't really buy that one as a, as a fix either. So uh, iPad though is a pretty safe choice. It's because it's so locked down. Yeah. It's really hard There's to screw these things do. up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not much you can do. It's an interesting way to put it. Not much I as a bad guy could do. This is true. Right now it's locked down, so it's uh, it's, it's one of the options out there. If you guys want to give us all kinds of idea ideas, you guys have been. You've been emailing us at knowhow at twit.tv. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail 408 800 K N O W. We've been, I've been listening to these things, I've been reading these, and everyone who's looking for the Raspberry Pi episode, I'm going to say it here on this episode. When are we doing next that? Next month we are doing the next Raspberry month. Pi episode. Got it's it. sitting in the cabinet. I'm going to be playing with it over the break. We've got some time now. This is our last episode of the year. Mm -hmm. Next week are we going to do a best of Next week we have a best of, and the other thing about the best of, it isn't just goofy segments. Every segment you'll be able to learn to do something, so definitely wow. watch that one. Watch segment. that. It's, everything's in there. It's, it's all in one. there. This is one of the newest shows on the Twit Network, and it's one of the best. I'm really glad that you decided to do Know How. We're really having a good time, and we're really glad you watch. We do Know How uh, on Thursdays. It's kind of the last show of my week, around about 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We hope you'll tune in uh, and watch live, because as you can see, the chat room is a big help. But if you can't, there's on-demand versions of all our shows, as you said, mm -hmm. on our website, twit.tv, but we also put them on YouTube, so you can watch them there. It's very easy. Just click. Uh, and the show notes, Ayaz did a great job. So twit.tv slash kh for every episode's show notes. You must read those. Well, now that you know how to fix your parents' computer, time to hit the road for the holidays. We'll see you next year. Bye-bye.